Hello everyone, Karnasa here and welcome back to Coming Home. So what we're going to do at the start of this episode is we are going to be sending definitely not Starship back home. So at the end of the last episode, we took Nedlick Kerman, we took Evan Kerman and Oliver Kerman over to Armstrong Base for the first, well, they were the first crew to ever attend this base. And actually, after doing the vote over on the community section of this channel, we do indeed have a name for the base, and it's very fitting considering we are on definitely not Minmus. We have sent definitely not Starship over to actually crew the base, so of course the base is going to be called definitely not Jamestown. I mean, it doesn't look anything like Jamestown, but it is a moon surface base. I almost said lunar surface base then, but it's it's not the moon. It is Armstrong. So I, I guess it does kind of fit. But you can see we have made ourselves into orbit with DNS. Now what we are doing is we are performing our burn over to road again. And what I decided to do here was I wanted to put my periaps at road at about 38 kilometers, not too far into the atmosphere. Because what I want to do with this craft when we get back is to actually slow down into a nice low ro road orbit even and actually use a little bit of Rhodes atmosphere to help us aero capture just a little bit. I thought 38 kilometers wasn't too low down that we would come burning up once we did return, but we have made our way into Rhodes atmosphere now. I'm doing a little bit of wobbling around just to try and keep my periaps at around 30 kilometers before starting our final descent. And here we are beginning our final descent now. We can see we are at 20 kilometers above Rhodes' surface, so we are really starting to feel the effects of re-entry. So I have armed the parachute, and of course, they decide to snap, and because of the way they deployed, it tore the craft apart. Luckily, we were able to get Oliver Kerman out and deploy his parachute. Unfortunately, though, this is me frantically trying to search for the other module that did contain Nedlick Kerman and Evan Kerman. It, unfortunately, got torn apart. So that is another couple of casualties that we have had for the Rode Planetary Space Alliance. This save has really been going quite terribly for the amount of Kerbals that I've killed, but we did bring Oliver back safely. Of course, he is going to plant a flag and that was an absolutely terrible design. What I want to do now is come into the vehicle assembly building because we have another transfer window coming up to Fury. We do get a lot of those probably because it is the closest planet to the Tempest System Barry Center. So what I want to do is send over a vastly better relay network. We do have our one relay antenna on our scanning orbiter at the moment, but unfortunately, as I mentioned in the last episode, it only works when road is closest to Fury. So what we are going to design here, what we have designed here, is a ginormous relay network. That means whenever we want to land something on Fury, we should have constant communication with the Space Center, which is going to be wonderful. And because I'm going to do that, we are going to send over two missions at once. And the second mission is going to be a rover. Now, the reason why I want to do a rover is because I still have the Fury Strategia contract up, and I have actually only landed in one biome. I did successfully land two landers in the last episode. Unfortunately, they both landed in the Midlands, so we are going to need to go to a couple of biomes. Rather than send two separate landers, I thought I would send a rover over and then we could drive that rover. Once it lands in its initial biome, we could then drive it over to another biome. But the launch vehicle for this, on a theme that I seem to have been going on at the moment, is going to be definitely not Falcon 9 because it is essentially a Falcon 9. I mean, look at it. It's basically the same thing. So we have built it up and we are going to be launching it Fury Relay on a Harpy X. <laughs> I did actually decide to call it something other than definitely not Falcon 9, but Harpy X, I mean SpaceX, it's, it's a kind of continuation of the Harpy series, which I have been using in this series, but it, it looks like a Falcon 9. But we have deployed, no, we have broken away. We have separated from our first stage, we had main engine cut off, and now we are making our way into orbit with the actual relay system. And there we have it. And now what we're going to do, once again, we are going to be focusing on reusability. Reusability is rather awesome, if I'm going to be honest, because we gain a lot of funds back every time we successfully recover a booster. So this first stage booster, well, this is the largest booster that I have created in this save so far. 
So it would be incredibly nice if we were able to bring it back down. And you can see we have slowed ourselves down to 10 meters per second using those parachutes. I unfortunately forgot to put antenna on the first stage booster, so we ran out of communications, but I tried to slow down at the last minute, and unfortunately, despite hitting the ground at two meters per second, yeah, the leg still broke. It's a bit weird, but now we are gonna be coming back to the orbiter and we are going to be making our way over to Fury. This is our trans fury injection. It takes a really long time, but there you go. I have cut out most of that and we are on our way to fury with our relay system. It's going to be very useful for the missions to come, but I did say that we are going to be sending two missions to fury. And of course, this is going to be the Rover on a Harpy X yet again. This is actually completely overbuilt for this. I really need to check the Delta V and as statistics for going into planetary. Since doing these missions, I have actually picked up the Delta V map and hopefully I shouldn't ridiculously overbuild my craft anymore. Not that it really matters if we are recovering our first stages because we will be getting a lot of money back from doing that. There you go, the fairings have deployed and we got a sight, a very short glimpse of the rover. We will see more of that later on. But now, once again, we are gonna be turning back to trying to land this booster. I have attached antenna this time, if I can remember correctly. Yes, no, I can see it on the actual booster. And what I wanna talk a little bit about now is I have done something for these booster recovery stages later on in this video. I'm not sure how it's gonna turn out. Please let me know what you think of it when it comes to it because I kinda of think it's really cool. We did actually succeed successfully managed to recover that booster, but unfortunately one of the legs did break again. There we go, once again we are with our rover. You can see there are a couple of radiators on there, obviously going to Fury. Fury is very hot, being the closest planet to the Temper System Barry Center, so we use those radiators so that we can actually bleed off as much heat as possible, but there we go, we have performed our burn and we are on our way. So, <laughs> I decided to time warp ahead to the actual Arriver. Despite launching the Rover second, it was the first craft to arrive, but luckily, the relay wasn't far behind, so we were still able to communicate with this Rover. Here we are, just putting ourselves into a nice, low Fury orbit. And I do want to keep this in orbit for a little bit before descending it onto the surface because I want to set up our communications network first. That way, wherever we land on Fury, we should have constant communications back to road. But talking of our communications network, here it is. The relay has arrived. We are going to be trying to capture in about a one megameter orbit. It's a nice round number. And the antenna that are on that rover should be able to reach the relays. And once again, I am doing my calculations for my resonant orbit in my not in my head but I'm doing them on my own I don't have a mod or anything to help me out with those and I do know someone mentioned in the comments before or it was over on the discord I can't exactly remember where it was that there is a mod to do that for you and I can't remember where that is so if anyone would be as kind to inform me of that mod again please let me know because I really don't like doing the maths I like to have a mod to do all of that math for me instead so we have deployed our first relay now it is time to deploy our second one and <laughs> we almost very nearly lost that relay by smashing it into the actual carrier craft so we boost away just a little bit try and move to the side a bit and then we are going to set this into our second orbit so what i have done with this communications network as i always do with a communications network i have tried to make my orbital period for each three of these satellites exactly the same down to the millisecond that way as soon as they are in their original orbit we will never ever ever have to come to these again it'll be glorious we will have constant communications around fury without ever having to worry about it and i did actually manage to do that down to the millisecond but there we go we are going to be treated to a shot of fury just before we come back to the rover so i have got actually the bio map from scansat up so i could try and pick the biome that i wanted to land on as I said, I've already landed on the Midlands. The Midlands seem to be fairly prevalent on Fury. So it is actually kind of difficult to find a spot where we haven't been before. And I thought, yeah, we could try and target our landing. But unfortunately, Fury, you start slowing down as soon as you hit the atmosphere. And I'm not very good at targeted landings in atmosphere. I'm not running the trajectories mod. So I really, yeah, no, it was, it was, it was quite difficult to find a spot to actually target our landing. But luckily, we did come down over the lowlands, which has a thermal warning. 
Ah, ha <laughs> ha. But those radiators on top of the rover are more than capable of dissipating that heat that we are going to be gaining from staying on the surface of this very hot planet. And with a bit of an odd maneuver to actually get us off that platform that brought us safely down onto the surface, we start to drive away. And well, this rover is going to spend the rest of its days exploring fury for a lot of science and for a lot of funds, because we are going to be able to complete that contract as well. So with that, we did actually gain a lot of science. So we are going to come in and I am going to start making a beeline for some ISRU units because I do want to make our base over at Armstrong self-sufficient. Our base, definitely not Jamestown. I do need to remember that that is indeed now its name. So with those new technologies that we've picked up, what I'm going to do is, of course, we are once again in the vehicle assembly building. And this is going to be a new module that we are going to be launching to definitely not Jamestown. So the two things that are either side of that ISR unit are in fact recyclers and what they are going to do is they recycle supplies each one works for three kerbals so this means that we can have a crew of six kerbals on definitely not jamestown and what it will do is it will severely severely reduce the amount of supplies that they are going to be using so we can keep kerbals on there for a greater period of time and because of that well we are also going to need to upgrade our hab time so what i am doing is as was very much the case with the first lot of modules that we sent over to Definitely Not Jamestown, we are pretty much going to be using exactly the same launch vehicle. So we've got this little sky crane. We're going to attach some several other modules to it as well. And one of those is going to be a new habitation module, which I'm going to slightly edit. So it is a little bit different from the command module that we do already have on the surface, already attached to Definitely Not Jamestown. And another couple of things that I'm going to do is just attach these little connecty pieces. I thought if I I've got more options where I place modules down in the future. It'd be kind of nice. I can, I have, I have options where I want to go rather than being confined to the docking ports that I already have. So we are going to open ourselves up to future expansion as well with this craft. But there we go. We have finished it. We are updating those landing legs because they always seem to break the Falcon ones. So I wanted something a bit different. So I know we just built that Armstrong base piece, but actually what we're going to be doing is we're going to be launching definitely not Starship 2. And I know what you're thinking. Well, Karnasa, this mission completely failed before. You lost the first stage booster and you lost the orbiter. So why on earth are you doing this again? So I have indeed updated this spacecraft. You can see we do actually have some aero brakes on there and we have some massive, absolutely ginormous aero brakes on our first stage booster. And I thought this probably will help us slow down in the atmosphere a lot better than not having them. So I did have aero brakes on the first stage booster before, but they were absolutely tiddly compared to what we have now. These things, <laughs> I mean, look how big they are. They are absolutely massive. So they really increase the amount of drag that we get. And we are able to touch this down successfully which is great because we get about 90,000 funds from recovering that first stage. So I'm not going to send this crew over to Armstrong. This is just going to be a test, which means we are going to have way more fuel in here than we would on a return, which does make it a bit heavier. But it, we also are going to be able to use our engine to slow down a bit. Once again, our parachutes did rip apart, but luckily those air brakes did keep us stable and our main parachutes were in fact able to deploy. And there we go. We can see we are coming down at a nice 6.5 meters per second, even slower now, now that we've deployed the engine. And there we go. We have touched down safely, a fully reusable spacecraft. So finally, another transfer window has opened up. So what we're going to be doing is we are going to be sending a relay and a scanner over to Hydrus. This is, of course, going to be the relay network that we are going to set up. So we do have communications. I didn't show the build for this because it is exactly the same as the one that we sent to Fury. So I did mention earlier on, I did something a little bit special <laughs> with the booster landing stages. And this is it. I was definitely 100% not inspired by what SpaceX do with their streams for this. So we get to see the orbit well the second stage making its way to orbit at the same time as the booster tries to perform its landing so let me know what you think about this but you can see the booster the first stage booster is now coming down very 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 slowly and any minute now it is going to touch down i'm really struggling with it there we go we have landed and that means we can focus once again well we always saw what was going on with the second stage but yes we are back to the second stage 
and it is going to perform its Transhydrus injection. Not anywhere near as bad as performing a Transfury injection. There we go. We can see Rogue disappearing off into the distance as we turn our focus to the scanner, which is launched on an MRLV, and that is a medium reusable launch vehicle. So I am getting rather good with reusability now. We've had, what, two in a row that we have actually successfully put down, which is really, really fantastic. The funds that we get back from that are going to be really, really nice. It's always nice to get a little bit of money back. But there we go. We did have a bit of a coast stage before we fire up that engine again to get ourselves into orbit. And once again, we are going to be treated to the Road Planetary Space Alliance multicam whilst we watch the booster descend and also watch the second stage make its way into orbit. So the second stage for this, the actual payload is the same as the scanner as I sent to Fury in the last episode. I am, <laughs> I'm really not really innovative with these designs at the moment, but it did the job, it worked perfectly. The only difference is we don't have relay antennas on here because that is going to be provided by the relay network that we are sending over. But I did miss it, <laughs> I did miss talking about it. We did also successfully land the booster yet again. So three in a row, we are really on a roll with our reusability at the moment. But there we go, bye bye road, as we are going to finally come back to that new module that I have built for Definitely Not Jamestown. And this is going to be launched on exactly the same launch vehicle as we just launched the scanner. And a problem with this is when I was building this, I incorrectly set my root part. So when I detached for the second stage, well, it changed us to the booster rather than keeping us onto the second stage, which means FMRS got messed up, so we're not going to be able to recover this booster. And it also <laughs> caused us to do a little bit of a spin when we were, well, when we separated. But we did manage to recover from that spin, and now we are on our way over to orbit. There we go, we have achieved orbit, and it is just a quick burn to make our way over to Armstrong. It really doesn't take a lot of Delta V to get to Armstrong. I think it's about 6 650 meters per second and then when we get there it takes absolutely nothing and then well when we land it's it's nettleable it's only like 100 meters per second that you need to land but anyway we have sent our capture stage crashing into the surface of armstrong and what we're going to be doing is we are going to start descending these pieces onto the surface so i spent nearly the entire of the last episode focusing on this so I thought rather than showing me getting up to orbit, rendezvousing with the pieces, doing all of that, I, I mean, I've shown that I can do that already. I thought I would just get to the exciting stuff, which is going to be actually landing the different pieces and connecting them up. So the first piece we did connect was one of those connectors. Now the second piece that we are gonna be sending down, which we are almost docked now, is going to be the new habitation module to hopefully vastly improve our hab time. Now we are gonna be sending down yet another one of those connectors. I did launch two in one with this launch. And the final piece that we are gonna be sending down is of course the ISRU recycling unit. And unfortunately, we are gonna to need to send down yet another module in order to actually drill some stuff because I haven't included any drills on this base yet, but that will come in a future episode. 